Prime Minister announces abolition of Kumul Telecom Holdings Limited. Call for investigation into methanol-related deaths in Kainan 2. And call to split Lagaib Pogera Electric. Good evening. This is Sunday's News. I'm Kilawani. Prime Minister James Marpe has announced the abolition of Kumul Telecom Holdings and the amalgamation of Telecom and B-Mobile into one single telecommunication company called Telecom Limited. He also announced a wholesale telecommunication company, Dataco. Dataco will look after the country's international satellite and optic fiber connections. This important milestone is under the government's state-owned enterprise reform program as the country celebrates 46 years of independence. This follows a National Executive Council decision on June 2021 approving the abolition of KTHL and reinforcing earlier NEC decisions to merge Telecom and B-Mobile into a separate company called Telecom Limited. The Prime Minister says telecommunication is one of the service sectors where SOEs are heavily involved. Unfortunately, over recent years, the value of telecommunications assets have eroded. PM Marape said Telecom Limited and Datako would be subsidiaries of Kumul Consolidated Holdings and the changes announced had been approved by all necessary stakeholders and regulatory bodies including Internal Revenue Commission, Investment Promotion Authority, NICTA and the ICCC. The Prime Minister says this announcement will add improved telecommunication to the list of improved services and strategies that the government has embarked on. He says given the rugged terrain, it is essential that the country must have an efficient telecommunication network to connect the country and the rest of the world. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. The U.S. Aid Lookout Team Ground Project has been working closely with PNG's Conservation and Environment Conservation Protection Authority. In a recent conference, the U.S. Aid LGP made official announcements to confirm its grant awardees to carry out biodiversity conservations throughout the country. We, uh, are support the U.S. Aid Lookout Team Ground Program has officially announced its grant awardees. The LGP grants program strengthens capacity of community-based organizations and NGOs to carry out conservation initiatives in PNG. An estimated value of 2 million kina was shared between the awardees to continue their projects with support from the LGP which is led by Cardno International Development. U.S. AIDS Chief of Party in PNG, Maurice Knight, gave an insight on the establishment of the grants program. When we talk about small grants, uh, some of them aren't so small. Some of them are actually quite large. Um, but what are the reasons why we have small grants programs? There are two primarily. Uh, the first is to develop capacity of local organizations. When I say local, I mean homegrown, PNG organizations, national organizations, uh, provincial scale organizations, even community-based organizations, to develop their organizational capacity to pull their people together, uh, to work uh, together to solve challenges uh, that resonate within their own communities. Also speaking at the event was U.S. Ambassador to PNG, Erin Mackey, who acknowledged the work of the grant awardees and applicants and acknowledged USAID's partnership with the local NGOs. So the United States, through USAID, aims to shape a future together a future in which both people and biodiversity thrive via improvements in economic prosperity, social equity, and environmental stewardship. So through this small grants program, USAID will work with local non-governmental organizations and the private sector. That's the meaning of partnership. This partnership takes at least two, right? So not one entity can do it alone. And we're going to work with non-governmental organizations in the private sector to implement proje projects based on building local capacity, focused on building local capacity, natural resource management, and strengthening of community resilience. The two awarded organizations confirmed were Center for Environment Law and Community Rights and Outspend PNG Limited. The USAID LGP also acknowledged the participants of three other grant applicants, New Guinea Binatan Research Center, MND, and Research and Conservation Center. Jamie Harrell, National MTV News. 
Residents in Kimbe gathered at the Bernard Vogai Memorial Park for the 46th Independence Celebration. It started with a parade by members of the police force and CS officers. Regional MP Sassindran Muthuvel inspected the parade, which was followed by the flag racing ceremony. Also present was Governor and Talasia MP Francis Maneke. Both leaders addressed those who attended the event. The independent celebration included choir presentations by different churches in town. Traditional dancers from Kobe and other parts of West New Britain also participated in front of hundreds. Now, Papa Bloyimi also late uh, Grand Chief Samare, I'm using wisdom long M. I'm no spilling blood blood Papa Nigini, but I'm kissing this independence come. I tell you, when a country can become truly independent, when a country can truly become independent is only when you feel the love and care for that country and only when you feel this country is ours. Only when you feel this country is ours, that's when you will fight for independence. That's when you will ask for, you can think the challenges, you know now this is a kind of sophisticated time also in communication, technology, I'll get something stuff. Time current chief and stuff and time also in seventies, yeah. You know got one plug and big plug technology, na big plus something. But long am lo facing this la challenge at that time. Against lo algata odd, lo bring him this la independence, we have to salute his life na same time as a founding father. Now you meet give him little time to lo think about all those forefathers who said he go past now work one time lo bring him this la independence. Lo extend him this line like talk, thank you. Lo leaders since lo nineteen seventy five. Lord, this is the time of leaders for him in the province. Or leaders for him in Papua New Guinea or here. Or in case in country for him in Ablo today. Me like talk, thank you, Lord. The people of Kuni LLG in the Kairukuhiri district of Central Province came together to showcase their culture as part of their Independence Day celebrations. The traditional songs and cultural rituals were performed as a way of celebrating 46 years of independence. They say for many years their culture was left hidden and it is time they showcase their culture to the rest of the country. Kuni LLG is one of the newly established local level government in the Kairukuhiri district and it is one of the remote LLG in the district which says its border with Goelala district. The people here say for many years they have not practiced their culture and it is dying. On Independence Day, the people gathered in their distinctive traditional costumes to showcase their culture. The culture that we, that is, main, that is mainly in the Kuni tribe. We have, uh, from Kuni area itself, we have uh, three different cultures. The, the cultures that we show in Kuni. And the main, very main one, that is uh, mostly, and it is popular in Kuni area, as you can see. These are the, uh, the, the costumes that we normally wear. As. The first group is uh, Kuni itself. Second group, um, Nara. And uh, third is uh, Lapaka tribe. The Kuni culture is unique with traditional attires and cultural songs and rituals. The traditional headdress is made from feathers of a bird only found in the area with tapa cloth made from a special tree from the area. And they sing mostly about their land and what made them the Kuni people. They say for many years they have not practiced this true Kuni culture. will see very clearly is uh, our girls they don't wear grasket they wear tapa uh, cover their themselves to dance this uh, kuni traditional dance so you will see most of our girls all the girls here they are dressed in tapa they prepare in advance for a month or two to get themselves prepared to dance this very important uh, very sacred songs that that is uh, uh, talking about their land 
and how they became to be in their land. And they've seen about their mountains. They've seen about their sacred things that is in their land. The, the composition or the lyrics of the songs that they've seen are all from uh, their legend. The Independence Day celebration was hosted by a local primary school in the area. The ward councillors say they are plans to participate in more cultural festivals to showcase their unique culture. Uh, and then the Kuni culture has been uh, hidden for some, some years. It faded. But now uh, and, uh, our teachers here, uh, they are trying to uh, bring up this uh, culture back again. So now we, st we studied it and when we saw this one, it was very, very interesting. So Starting now, and I will bring my uh, Kuni culture, I will showcase it uh, to the country and uh, uh, maybe to the world. Uh, that's, that's my initiative to uh, do that. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. Dolo MP and Vice Minister for Agriculture, Pogio Gate, has called for an investigation into the deaths of 14 people in Kainantu after consuming methanol. He says report must be established with recommendations on what to do next. The Vice Minister also appealed to the people of Kainantu and Ayura to work together with the investigation team. The investigation will begin on Tuesday. We must, we must take him some uh, responsibility. No put him on man, go inside so that only can find him out. Find him out what really happened. For what reason that like kind of money die? Now who is at fault? This is something that we have to really find out. Now me blame myself. As a leader, me blame myself. So me blame and talk so that one him some him come up that is some him come up. So that by no not. Me blame myself. Let's talk so that what actually happened that is a dead him come up. So the team will be dispatched by Tuesday. We look at on Tuesday, I'm under ample time, with Secretary and my approved Next week, Tuesday, we might have a team in place ready to dispatch on the ground. Dispatch on the ground, letting more people against several and government, or Papua New Guinea, and now I'm sub in place now to make sure that this is uh, what is going to happen. Lo, lo people will have said. So no other money tells them, I'm not saving them. I'm not saving them. I'm not sorry. No, what actually happened? But online, no help, please take him some kind of responsibility. Time on people, and time on the team, and go to help to look out him on and put him on my team some report on the ground. What really actually happened? On must give me the report on this. Report on this, but I'm not trying to take, uh, take uh, into account when a master's summoning him come up. So, complete report, no. Complete report, no. Uh, time him come. We'll do almost report to cover all my talks. I also must recommend him. Maybe call recommendation. Must go back and look CIC, uh, CIC board, CIC board we're already in place now. We we got CIC already in place. The Maip Mulitaka local level government is calling on the Electoral Boundaries Commission to split Lagai Pogera district into three electorates. A petition was presented to the Electoral Boundaries Commission to address their concern. The Maip Mulitaka people say this is for equal representation and better service delivery going forward into the future. The idea to split Lagai Pogera was first mentioned in the floor of Parliament in 1985 by former MP Mark Ipuya. It was because of land mass and population. However, according to former MP, the idea was not actioned. Late this week, a petition containing two options to split Lagai Pogera was presented to the representatives of Electoral Boundaries Commission. And uh, I want or we are calling upon the Electoral Boundaries Commission to give Lagai Pogera a special consideration and have it split it into three. Let Pogera Payela be take number one as a separate electorate. My Mulitara take it as a second electorate, open electorate, and Lagai take it as a third electorate. That's our option number one we are presenting. Number two, if uh, electoral commission, uh, electoral commission uh, boundaries people are adamant not to consider us or recommend us for three, then we'll be 
we Muletara people will be put together and annexed to Pogara Payala. Three former Lagai Pogara MPs were also present and were in support of the idea to split the electorate for better representation and service delivery in the future. So when you split the electorate, you have to split it according to the population and the land they live in. So you cannot leave the land down there and then give the people voted for Lagai. Uh, yeah, like we, we, we ethnically, we are people from Pogara and part of our tribes are living in Pogra, part of us are living in Muditaka. Our land is in Pogra, so we, are, we, we, we must be part of, uh, we must be part of uh, Pogra. During the handover of the petition, the Maip Mulitaka LLG representatives said they want the boundaries to be set immediately. And we thank you, Prime Minister, to push it forward. Um, it would be nice if we have it in 2000. Uh, 22. 22. We are looking for it. Uh. Podivai National MTV News. This is National MTV News. When we come back, we bring you tonight's A Closer Look. Welcome back to the news. For the first time ever, the people of Maramuni in Anga province saw vehicles drive into their station. This marked completion of the pilot road linking Wabeg to the remote outstation. Wabeg MP Dr. Lino Tom, who drove the first vehicle, was welcomed by dozens of weeping elderly men and women who had long been wishing for a road to be built. Four years of building and a lot of sacrifice. And on Independence Day, the people of Maramuni had every reason to be joyful when Wabag MP Dr. Lino Tom drove his land cruiser up the last hill before Pasalaku Station. There, the welcome party began the celebrations. And while the main crowd waited at the station, the villagers wanted him to hear what they had to say. <laughs> A lot of tears, a lot of laughter and gratitude for the team who delivered a road on Independence Day. Yeah, it was quite emotional. I had a bit of a few, few tears as well. They were all crying and uh, they were saying in Anga language like, you know, this is like the best thing that has ever happened to them. They were all, there was no hope for them to see actually any vehicle coming here. So, um, uh, they cried a bit and said thank you so uh, it was a bit emotional like like I said they all cried too and I know I got a, a bit emotional as well. A time here, 11, 10 years of like independence, 1974. Mr. Abnot kissed him. All people cry, go, 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 the children who had never seen vehicles before ran with the convoy for a kilometer and a half to the station. The Wabeg to Maramuni Road is a feat that challenges the notion that districts need hundreds of millions of kina to build pilot tracks. In fact, for years, that's what people have been told and they believed it until things started changing. Four years ago, the Wabeg district challenged the status quo. It bought its own machines and brought in the best people who were willing to work for a fraction of the pay. Um, building this road has actually showed us that we can get a lot done with less funding. Uh, if we allow the DDAs themselves or whichever government organize, organization themselves to actually build, um, giving out contracts is good, but you can do that in uh, roads that are quite established, well established. Uh, in building pilot projects, it's quite difficult with the amount of money that we have available now, it's quite difficult for us to build such a road. Bringing this road for them, it, it's, it's a blessing for them and their kids. You just imagine after 46 years of independence, and that road coming, it's since creation. Nothing has come far. This 
This is a very difficult region to manage, and according to government estimates, about 20,000 people live along these mountain ranges all the way to the Sepik Plains. And for the young people, the new road opens up opportunities that their parents and grandparents never had. And these young men from the Sepik border walked for five days to get to the station for this event. For the first time in their lives, they'll be able to transport their goods to market on a truck instead of walking for a week to Wabeg. This is Sunday's news. More stories when we come back. Welcome back. A total of 30 million kina has been committed to East Sepik province by the national government for various projects. Among them, the Sir Peter Luce Memorial Hospital to get 5 million kina and Sir Peter Luce Foundation to get 1 million kina. Maprik district in Isipik province is developing at an astounding rate thanks to the rural economy in the district and the surrounding districts of both East and West Sipik. The Prime Minister was recently in town to personally acknowledge the contributions of Sir Peter Luce to the sovereign state of Papua New Guinea as Papua New Guineans in this part of the country hosted Sir Peter's exit program coinciding with PNG's 46th independence. The Prime Minister also made several commitments on that day, announcing that a 17 million kina has been put into the East Sipik Provincial Government account for education and another 5 million kina for land registration. From the 17 million kina, Marape suggested setting up food centers in all secondary and high schools in the province to allow students who missed a placing after grade 8, 10 and 12 an opportunity to upgrade their marks and further their education. For the 5 million kina, he honored a commitment made in Chambri to help landowner groups formally register their land in order to take part in agriculture-based businesses. Another 5 million kina was committed to Maprik district to complete the Sir Peter Luce Memorial Hospital and another 1 million kina to the Sir Peter Luce Foundation. And let me talk about some 30 million kina for cost of Pinisi Ms. Lausik to the people of Civic Central District working with Lausik, make a same now put him in a basket for national government. Long this we come long and we got him five million kina I come, long give him public district, long go, go inside so you know me, but national government. And the balance of 25 million will work it through this year, next year, and this time, next year, hopefully, the hospital is complete and Sir Peter Luce himself can go and open the hospital for us. The district has also put an initial 100,000 kina towards the Sir Peter Luce Foundation to assist students who are struggling with school fees. Another 5 million kina has been committed towards plans to build a university at Bainik in Maprik. Another two million to help the district complete its cocoa buying point. A lot of investment into education, health and agriculture, with the Prime Minister pointing the way towards agriculture as the foundation for a happy and healthy nation. Education, he emphasized, as the key to understanding the basics of life and allow young people to understand and explore the business opportunities available through agriculture. The goal is to make PNG the richest black nation in 10 years' time. Cacao, na vanilla, na copra, na coffee, na. Bull Macau, you make him good, but you grow him economy plus civic. And civic, but not have need him oil or gas money. Or civic, but not have need him or not no money, he can survive in his own, in as far as agriculture money is concerned. Me, one of the Prime Minister, believe in agriculture potential. Chairman Poriambev, National MTV News. 
The Pangu Party office in Maprik is now open for membership. Prime Minister James Marpe was in town and given the honours to officially open the office. He was then given a tour of the office. And as I was saying earlier today, Pangu is an ordinary party. All the institutions of state we have today are gifts of Pongo in 1975. Yeah, that's right. The constitution, the independence of judiciary, the banking system, uh, the public service structure. Who gifted it? You know a PNC or you know another one. Pongo in 1975. We are back now, you know, in 1968, 75. Give all the system. Pongo will be here well after me and John Sanders. Right. 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 So we will pass on a better party that is truly organic, PNC owned. You know, it's an uh, outside base, no, a historic party that gave you the yeah. So, what are the And Trukai Sports is next. All the details when we come back. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. The Southern Youth FC side on Saturday managed to draw uh, with West New Britain side Tabor FC won all after 90 minutes of football in the Kumul Petroleum National Soccer League Southern Conference in Port Mosby. It was a great afternoon for football in the Kumul Petroleum National Soccer League on Saturday, with Southern Youth FC taking on Tavur FC, the men from West New Britain. This match would be the second encounter for both teams. The first was in the opening round of the Kumul Petroleum National Soccer League, whereby Southern Youth FC won two goals to one. The match started slow with both teams on the offensive at most, but the game slowly picked up with some good individual play by the Southern Youth. Mesulam, danger. Well, if they can take an early shot without that Messi, I'm out of goal. Tavur FC found it challenging when in their opponent's territory and missed out on some goals. Both teams tried to find the back of the net in the first half, but were both left goalless at half time. The second half, however, saw both teams eager to score, and the youth side made an impression with a goal from the throw in. High chance. Not to be outdone, the Tavur side did get opportunities, but were caught up in the goal area. Slip by Ezekiel. Southern Youth FC on the other end of the field took their chances, but were met with some brilliant goalkeeping. And a second strike. Nashilam forced with that save. But Tavur FC caught the youths napping and in the match in a one all draw. Hard for Tomon Rocker's calling. And Cyril Rocker pulls one back. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. The Port Mosby Records Club hosted a four-day tennis open tournament which started on Thursday. More than 80 players took part in the Junior Open, Senior and the Legends category. This tournament is also a boost for young athletes in the junior development for tennis. It's a tough time to host competitions, but the Port Mosby Records Club pulled off yet another successful tennis open tournament with the support of corporate bodies. With the aim to emphasize more concentration on junior development, the POM RC is keen to organize more tournaments. The Records Club says this is vital to see the outcomes of their training in preparation for other upcoming events in the region. I think our junior development program is showing a little bit some, some fruits, yeah? so, but it's a long way for, for these kids, especially here when we don't have a lot of tournaments. And you, you see that, as I said in my opening speech on Monday, this training is not, a, it's not everything. You need to have tournaments, right? And we speak to the juniors a lot, we t give them tips, and then it's up to them. They have to train and they have to play tournaments. So we hope we do more tournaments in the near future. 
Whilst there is a need for more tournaments to see how junior athletes are progressing, PNG's two youngsters Sugar Ray Akena and Kolita Akena are making strides in the tennis courts. The siblings slotted in the junior division put up some impressive performances in the Palm RC Tennis Open. COVID-19 has ruined some stuff, but yeah, I'm definitely picking back up, coming back and, you know, coming back enjoying the sport. It's good to be back and, yeah, just looking forward to playing the finals. The Tennis Open ended today with the finals playoffs. Meanwhile, the squash tournament will also be held at the Palm RC from the 1st to the 3rd of October. Suli Suli, Trukai Sports. And that on Strukai Sports, we'll bring you the weather report after these messages. Strukai Sports. Strukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, southern region, Port Mosby, cloudy periods with few showers and possible inland thunderstorms, Daru, partly cloudy with few squally showers, Kerma, cloudy with some showers, Alotau, cloudy periods with few showers, Popondeta, cloudy with showers and possible thunderstorm. Momase, lay cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. Medang, cloudy periods with brief showers possible. Wiwek and Vanimo, cloudy periods with few showers. New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, cloudy periods with few showers possible. Kaviang, partly cloudy with brief showers possible. Kokopo and Rabaul, cloudy periods with few showers. Kimbe, partly cloudy with few evening showers and Buka, cloudy with few showers. For the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, cloudy with showers and possible thunderstorms. Gorka and Kundiawa, cloudy with some showers. Mendi and Wabeg, cloudy with showers and possible thunderstorms. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. The way it is this Sunday, 19th of September 2021. Until next time, have a great week ahead. Be safe. Bye for now.